Thank you so much for the love shown for the first two parts of this video series on grouping in PowerPoint. If you have not watched the first two parts, I will leave a link to that in the iCard as well as in the description box below so you can watch those and come back here. In this video, we will talk about how certain tools work when the objects are grouped and when they are not grouped. Before we get into the video, I am Ram Gopal from presentationprocess.com. If you want to receive 25 creative presentation ideas that you can use in your next presentation, please join this 5-day free email course by clicking on the link in the description box below this video. Let us start by understanding how custom animation applies to a group and to individual objects. Let us add a few circles so we can understand the difference. So we have got three of these circles. Now let us select all three of them. Let us apply animation and this time I'm going to apply fly in animation and let us have the direction changed from left. Now observe the way the objects appear on screen. Can you see each of these objects come at different times even though they are all coming with previous and that is because of the distance difference. Now let us have a copy of this by pressing Ctrl D but this time I'm going to group them together. I'm going to apply the same fly in animation from left and observe how this one works. See the earlier one and this one. Can you see the difference? All three come together. And this is a very important characteristic of a grouped object when custom animation is applied. Why is it helpful? Whenever you want to create any business graphic, you will see that elements are grouped together when they need to appear together on scene. For example, you can see when I click on this, this text box and this text box are grouped together so they can come together. The same way when I click here, there are quite a few things that are grouped together because I want these things to come together. When I go to slideshow, you can see, when I click, you can see that these two are grouped together, these two are grouped together and therefore they appear at a certain time. When I click again, you can see the next group appears, the next group appears, and the next group appears. This makes it possible for you to tell your visual story with so much more control because you decide which elements come together first and then which set of elements come together next and so on. So that is the application for understanding how custom animation applies to a group versus individual objects. Another unique thing about grouping is it allows you to keep relative proportions intact when you resize graphics. Let me show you what I mean by this. Let us draw two shapes. This time I'm going to draw squares. So let me make a duplicate of this. Let us select both of them. I'm going to hold the shift button down and as I resize, observe the distance between the objects. Proportional distance is not maintained. Now let me press Ctrl Z. Let us select both of them, press Ctrl G to group them. Now let me hold the shift button and resize. Now notice that the proportion of the distance is maintained. And this is the reason why it helps to group the objects that need to maintain that distance proportion. Let me show you the application of this. Now the same graphic here. Let us try to resize this by selecting everything and by holding the shift button. Now as I resize this, you can see that everything falls apart. Now instead, if I were to select everything, press Ctrl G to group, hold the shift button down and then resize, you can see that the resize happens perfectly. So if you want to have better control in the way you manage your graphics, then knowing how to group things together makes a lot of difference. The next unique thing about grouping is in the way shadows apply to grouped objects. Let me show you this. Let us draw four squares. Let me draw the first square here. Now, let us see what happens when I select all of these individually and then go to shape effects, go to shadow and use this perspective shadow right. Can you see each individual object has its own shadow? Now, let us see what happens if I were to group them all together. Let us press Ctrl Z. I'm going to press Ctrl G to group them together. Now, let us go to shape effects, go to shadow and use perspective right. Can you see the shadow appears for the entire group and this is very useful. Especially when you're working with graphics like this, when you group everything together and apply shadow, this looks far more realistic than to have shadows applied to individual shapes, which really messes up the graphics. Now, a similar thing happens with the rotation of grouped objects as well. First, I'm going to select all of them, all the individual objects, and I'm going to rotate them. And as I rotate, can you see how the rotation behaves here? Now let us see what happens when I group everything together by pressing Ctrl G and when I apply rotation, 
Can you see how the rotation happens? This is a very important thing to understand and there is a very beautiful application of this, especially when you want to use ghost objects. Let me show you what I mean by this. Let us say I want to draw a clock and I want to use this as the needle of the clock. And this is going to be the dial. And then let us have this as the needle. Now this needle is supposed to go around the clock like this. Let us see what happens when I use the rotation option. Let us right click, go to size and position and increase the rotation degrees. And you can see that it doesn't go around the clock. Instead, it is rotating all by itself. The reason for that is the center point or the pivot of this shape is right here. And that is the reason why when it is rotating, it is rotating around its central axis. Now, if I want this to be used as a needle for the clock, then I need to change the center point from this to this. That is where we use the ghost shape. To create the ghost shape, I'm going to select this and press Ctrl D to create a duplicate. Let me flip this horizontally and place this to one side like this. I'm going to increase the transparency all the way till 100% and both of them are going to be grouped together. Now observe what happens when I rotate. Can you see it goes around the dial like this and this is exactly what we want. So understanding how things rotate differently when they are grouped and not grouped is a very important thing for you to note. Now this difference works pretty similarly when you want to apply realistic 3D effect to graphics as well. Let us pick up some smart art, maybe this radial diagram and say, okay, select this and press Ctrl Shift G. Now this is a grouped one. Let us reduce the size a little bit so it is much more manageable. And let us have two copies of this. By pressing Ctrl D, I can make a duplicate and place the other one here. Now this is grouped and this is going to be ungrouped just now. Let us go to effects option, go to 3D rotation and I'm going to use one of the presets, perspective relaxed. Let us go to 3D format and add a depth of around 25 points and hit enter. Now observe how the graphic looks. It looks all warped. Now let us do the same thing for this grouped one. I select this, go to effects option. As we did earlier, let us first apply 3D rotation and the perspective relaxed option and then go to 3D format and add a depth of around 25 points. This looks correct, whereas this looks all wrong. So 3D applies very differently to groups compared to the individual objects. The way color gradients apply to groups is very different from the way color gradients apply to individual objects. Let us go to shapes and let us draw say five squares. So now we have five of these individual objects. I'm going to apply gradient. So I'm going to select all of these. Then go to gradient fill. I'm going to have three gradient stops. One is going to be somewhere in the middle. The first one is going to be say red. Let us change the direction to say from left to right and the second one is going to be orange so the transition is from red to green and this one is going to be green and you see how the gradient looks. Individual shapes have this gradient applied. Now let us select everything, press Ctrl D to create a duplicate. Let us press Ctrl G to group it. Now let us apply the same gradient fill by going to gradient fill option but this time you can see it is going from red to green in a graded way. As a result, this can be used pretty beautifully to represent a scale visually. Next, let us see how grouping can actually save us a lot of time, especially when you want to create repetitive patterns. So I'm going to select everything by pressing Ctrl G. Now I can create the grid pretty easily by first pressing Ctrl D and then hit Ctrl D again, 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 again. Now, where can something like this be of use? Just let us press Ctrl G to group it. 3D rotation, perspective relaxed. Now I'm going to use this very interesting perspective angle here. Can you see by default it is 45 degrees for that preset. Now I'm going to widen the field like so by clicking here by increasing the perspective angle. Can you see it is so beautiful. Now when I go to slideshow, you can see that we have got a very nice 3D grid floor and this kind of a grid can be created quite easily by using grouping. Another powerful way to use grouping is to combine it with distance from ground option. And I'm going to pick up some graphics. Say let us go to relationship and let us pick up this one called as stacked Venn diagram and say OK. Let us reduce the size a little bit so it is more manageable. Now I'm going to convert this into a stepped pyramid. How? Let us first break this down to individual objects. Control shift G, Control shift G. Now I'm going to align everything to the middle. 
So we have a set of concentric circles. Now I am going to press Ctrl G to group them. Like we did earlier, we are going to apply a 3D rotation perspective. The same perspective as we did earlier, perspective relaxed. And we can hit the down angle a little bit so you can see that the graphic is more lying down. Let us add some depth to this by going to 3D format option here. And let us go to depth and let us say 25 points is the depth here. Now to create the pyramid, I'm going to combine it with the distance from ground option which is available in 3D rotation and it is here distance from ground. We are going to multiply the depth in this case it is 25 points by the number of circles it is away from the last one. You can see that the center one here is three away from the last one. This is the last one. So first, second and third. So that means three into 25, which is 75. So let us go to the 3D rotation option and distance from ground this time is going to be 75. The next one is going to be 25 lesser than the previous one because it is two rings away from the last one. So I'm going to have two into 25, which is 50. And this one is just one away from the last one. So it is 25. And here we have a beautiful circular pyramid created. You cannot create this graphic this beautifully if you had not used this grouping and distance from ground combination. That is how deep you can go into a simple insignificant looking tool called grouping. Now imagine in Ram Gopal's PowerPoint mastery program, which is a combination of 42 courses, how deep we would have gone into the various tools and the functionalities of PowerPoint. And when you go through this program, how much of an understanding you will have in creating presentations that command attention from your audience. I will leave a link to this useful product in the description box below the video. Please click on the link, watch this video and see how this program can change the way you create your presentations. If you like this tutorial, then you will really love this playlist we have put together called PowerPoint Tips for Beginners. You can start watching that playlist by clicking on the link right now on your screen and I'll see you inside those videos next.